Hey guys, today in this video we're going to talk about how to calculate the correlation coefficient plus how to determine if that correlation coefficient is statistically significant. Now we've really switched gears with this chapter. Um, we're looking at relationships between variables now. So we're looking at how two things are related to one another, not necessarily the differences between groups. So in this data set I've got um, five variables that I'm looking at. Um, you can see my key is over here. So I've got um, this data set looks at self-concept among men. So we can see my first variable is intimate. High scores on this variable indicate that respondents have a positive self-concept in intimate relationships. Uh, the next one is friend. High scores on this variable indicate that respondents have a positive self-concept in relationships among friends. Common. High scores on this variable indicate that respondents have a positive self-concept in their knowledge of everyday events and their use of common sense reasoning. Academic. High scores on this variable indicate that respondents have a positive self-concept in their scholarly knowledge and their ability to reason with a rigorous formal manner. In general, high scores on this variable indicate that respondents have a positive self-concept in general. So there's a lot of variables in this data set, but there's a lot of different ways to calculate correlations. So today I'm going to talk about the multiple ways to calculate correlations first and then how to determine if it's significant. Okay, so let's take column A and column B. So intimate, those um, self-concepts with intimate relationships and friends, self-concepts with relationships among friends. Let's determine the correlation between those two. Now there's lots of different ways. Option A is going to be using the correlation function um, within Excel that's built in. So if I type equals C-O-R-R-E-L, you see the function that pops up is a correlation. Now here, array one and array two, we simply highlight the numbers that we want This is our first variable. That's what array one means. Comma, and then array two. Sorry, my mouse pad is dying. And then array two. Now notice in this, I did not highlight the label fields. When you're using a function, you have to highlight only the numbers. So here's my function to calculate the correlation. If I hit enter, it gives me 0.5 as my correlation, okay? Now you'll notice that um, correlations can only be between negative one and positive one. So this definitely um, meets our criteria. This is a moderate, moderately strong correlation, okay? So that's option A. Option B is what's called a Pearson correlation. That's what we're doing in this chapter, is a Pearson correlation. There are many, many other options for correlations. Pearson's is the simplest um, and the one that you probably use most often. So again, there's a function. Equals, and then start typing Pearson. And you'll see the same option comes up, array one and array two. So I'm going to do the same thing. Highlight those same two columns of data. Okay, and you'll see, I get the exact same correlation for option A and option B. Option A, I use that correlation function. Option B, I use the Pearson function. We still say it is a moderately strong correlation. Okay, now option C, there's so many options. We can use our data analysis pack. So if I go up to data and data analysis, there's a correlation tool and here you have to put in your input range. Okay, so input range, I'm gonna highlight these two columns. Now notice this time I highlighted the labels in the top row.
Okay, checked labels in the first row. My output, I'm gonna put right here. Click OK. Now you see this looks a little different than option A and option B, whereas you get just a straight number for option A and option B. This gives you a nice little table. Now the reason for this is, if you have more than two variables, this table will be bigger. So for right now, we can see that all three of my options give me the same results, okay? Let's look at option C again. Let's say I wanna see the correlation between all five measures at one time, okay? So I'm gonna to go to data analysis. I'm gonna keep my correlation tool highlighted. This time I'm gonna highlight everything in my data set. So I'm looking not only at the correlation between the first two columns, I'm looking at all of them together. This is a real quick way to look at your data. If you're doing a correlation and you want the correlation values, you don't have to do them one at a time. You could do them all at the same time. Okay, so here's my table. So down the side, we've got all my variables. Down the top, or along the top, we've got all my variables. So if you look at intimate and friend, right, that's the same correlation we found before. Common, remember that common sense, um, high scores on this group will indicate a positive self-concept and common sense reasoning, okay? Common sense reasoning and intimate have a 0.35 correlation, okay? That's pretty weak. Um, academic and intimate have a 0.2, again, that's weak. General and intimate have 0.39, that's pretty weak as well. And you can see as we go down, common and friend, right, 0.46, um, that's moderate. Same thing here, 0.52, common and general. So if we look at this table, this is called a correlation matrix, okay? My strongest correlation is going to be this one between friend and intimate, because it's the highest value, 0.55. Um, this one, 0.52, is pretty close between common and general. Um, same as this one, 0.54, that one's pretty high. But my highest correlation is between intimate and friend, okay? So these are all the correlation values. This is not significance. This is just the correlation value, okay? In my next video, I'll talk about drawing conclusions, and we'll look at these numbers and how they fit into our um, APA write-up, okay? So this section was all about how to get your correlation value, okay? That's what this section is. Correlation value. But that's not the only thing we need to do with correlations. Now we need to figure out significance level. So correlation significance. Now this is not covered in your book, so make sure that you watch this video um, as many times as you need to to understand this. This is pretty complicated. So for to find the correlation significance, okay, if I look at these um, values, I mentioned common and academic um, had a pretty high correlation. Common in general had a pretty high correlation. So let's look at um, one of these other ones. Let's look at... Um, this general and common um, variable. And let's see if that correlation is significant, okay? So if I look at um, this one, so general knowledge, common sense knowledge. So I can't do that with an Excel in the correlation function. I actually have to go to data and data analysis and use the regression function. Um, this is what we'll talk about next week, um, specifically on um, what this is and how to calculate it, but to find the significance of a correlation, you need to use it here as well. So with this, we input our two variables. Again, I'm using that common and that general. So I'm gonna highlight these columns, include that label. and then highlight that general column as well. Make sure you have your labels selected. 
Now your output, I'm going to put over here, and it's my correlation significance. Don't check anything else. Don't worry about anything else. Just worry about highlighting the two variables that you are working with. Okay. Now when I um, highlight this out, when I work this out, we can see that I get a bunch of stuff. Okay. The only thing that I worry about on this output is this value right here. Okay. We have to change it to a number. We see 0 0.00. If I increase the decimal on that, right, keep going out, this p value you need to highlight. Okay, if less than 0 0.05, it is significant. Okay, so this is a significant correlation. We looked at um, general and common. So the general and common one. I'm going to highlight in red as being a significant correlation. Okay, so we've talked about how to calculate the correlation value. We've talked about how to calculate the correlation significance. Again, you need to have that regression um, function. Don't worry about anything else. We'll talk about the rest of it um, next week whenever we talk about regression. Just look at this p-value and make sure it's the p-value that's associated with the variable that you put in second. Okay. All right. In my next video, I'll talk about how to write this up.